programming for beginners. Hello world. We'll be using Python. Why Python? Because it's a programming language that's easy and used all the way from beginner courses to modern AI. So how to use Python? There are many ways to use Python and all of them are painful. You can use whichever one you want, but I'll be going with Replit. A little bit less painful. Go to replit.com. Sign up. Create a rep L with the Python template. Here's where you write the code. Let's write print hello. Why not hello world? We don't have time for that. Click run. Wow. It said hello. Congratulations. Variables. What's a variable? It's like a paper bag with a label on it and a thing in it. For example, my variable is called good number and its value is seven. That's a good number. Let's code it. In Python, variable names are usually written like this with underscores. Do I have to write it like that? No, but you can't have spaces. The value of a variable can be numbers, text, other stuff. These are called types and they have these names just to confuse you. Let's print our variable. I'll explain this part later. Want to practice? Make a variable with your name. Print my name is arithmetic. What's that? Math. Here are some basic operations. Let's practice. What's two plus three times four? Wow. What about two plus three times four? Interesting. Here are some less basic operations. Floor division, divide, then round down. Modulus, divide, but take the remainder. This one is confusing. Don't worry if you don't understand. And exponents. Want to practice? Calculate the average of these numbers using only Python functions. Every function has input, output. For example, add one. This function adds one. In Python, all functions are written exactly, exactly. like this. Def. It's short for define, space, name of the function, parentheses, input, colon, new line, tab. Then the code in the function, which can be anything. In this case, return a plus one. Now whenever you want to add one, you can just call your function like this. It, it works. works. Confused? That's okay, because more functions. Remember in part three when I said, want to practice? Calculate the average of these numbers. Well, here's the answer. But what if we made it a function? Calculate average with three inputs, A, B, and C, and one output, the average. These inputs are called arguments or parameters, just to confuse you. Now you can calculate the average of any three numbers. Wow. Got it? No. That's okay. Just keep going. Practice writing your own functions, and your brain will figure it out, maybe. Now what if you had more than three inputs? There's a solution to that. Lists. What's a list? Multiple things. Together. List of numbers. List of strings. List of lists. List of nothing. It's written with square brackets. You can print it. You can index it. What? Get the thing at a certain position in the list. For example, we have here my shop shopping list. And I want the fourth item, so I write this. Why not four? Because in all good programming languages, the index starts at zero. Got it. Wait, there's more. You can add things to lists. Remove them. Combine two lists. Want to practice? Print the second item in this list and in the next part. Dictionaries. What's a dictionary? It's like a list, but instead of indices, every item has a key, and you can use that key to find the item. What? Here's an example. Country to language. Dictionaries are written with curly brackets. Key, colon, value. Now we can look up the language of a country. You can also add items, remove them, change items. Want to practice? Create a dictionary where the keys are your usernames and the values are your password. No, don't do that. Do movie names and movie ratings. And in the next part, if, if what? If A is greater than B, print A is greater than B. Otherwise, A isn't greater than B. So what? If thirsty, drink water. It's useful. Every if statement needs if, space, boolean, colon, new line tab. Boolean means true or false. And when you write something like A is greater than B, Python evaluates it to true or false. Want to practice? Write a program that prints hello if B is greater than A. For loops. Remember part six? Lists. With a for loop, you can iterate over every item in a list. For example, print every item one at a time. It works. Remember if? If banana break out of the loop, why? You can also have a loop inside another loop. These are called nested loops, which are very controversial. You can also skip items in a loop or just do nothing. Want to practice? Print every item in this list except for banana. Wow loops. With a wow loop, as long as the condition is true, do something over and over. For example, here's a number. While it's less than 10, keep adding one. It works. But be careful because with the wow loop, it's easy to get stuck doing something forever, which will cause your computer to break. That's why you should break instead. Like this. This program takes your input and prints it back to you forever until you write quit. Got it? Good because that's everything in Python for beginners, except for the next part, everything together to build a calculator. Step one, let's write our functions. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And in divide, since you can't divide by zero, if b is zero, we'll say, hey, you can't divide by zero. Now for the main program, while true, that's a while loop. Print the instructions, then get the input. If the input is q, break out of the loop. Otherwise, if the input is one, two, three, or four, we'll ask for two more inputs, which are stored in these variables, and then add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them, then print the answer. Otherwise, invalid input. Let's see if it works. It works. Congratulations. You're now a Keck certified senior beginner Python programmer. Thank you for watching.